new movie out this week called Mandy, about which you know you will have heard and seen the posters, raises the question: How much more Nick Cage could it be? Answer: None more Nick Cage. And even I say that after the the, the extreme cinema experience of, of Mum and Dad. So. Essentially, this is a hallucinatory horror thriller fable directed by Panos Kosmatos, whose uh, father was the director of Cassandra Crossing, George P. We open uh, in uh, early 80s rural America, and everything about the beginning of the film tells us about the, the period setting, which, you know, like House of the Devil or Guest, you know, calls back the kind of movie which you would have seen perhaps on VHS. I remember when, when the guest came to DVD, I think they put it out on VHS copies, or was that House of the Devil? Anyway, so it has that sort of strange, old, retro feeling. A, a logger, played by Nick Cage, is seen very early on felling a tree. Uh, and, you know, it's logging, it's chainsaws. We know it's a horror movie. There's no way that chainsaws aren't going to come back in at some point later on. Anyway, he lives with his artist girlfriend, played by Andrea Risborough, who came on the programme. I think she came on originally to talk about the... the Oh, for heaven's sake. She came on to talk about the Madonna film, the film that she starred in that Madonna directed, Edward and Mrs Simpson, that was called... It was called... You... <clears throat> WC W not, you, you you start going off in this thing and then you look at me tell you W E was called wasn't it is that right it wasn't called W C W I it was called well, W W well, 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 yeah, fine anyway okay so uh, so she plays his uh, his partner who is somebody who seems to have had a hard life you know has the scars of a hard life and has now now spends her days drawing these kind of you know, graphic art depictions of what looked like sort of sci-fi inflected mythical scenes. And they have an apparently sort of, you know, happy and idyllic, if off-grid, relationship. One night she passes a vehicle on the road carrying members of a cult um, whose leader is Jeremiah San, who kind of comes on like a cross between Charles Manson again and um, Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs and Michael Cooper in Red State. And he sees something in her that he wants. And so he and his crew call up the Black Skulls to kidnap the couple, sparking a trail of vengeance. You and that ugly little whore. You think you're so in love. I'll show you love. Lucy? Neil. Now show him how much you love me. <laughs> Go for it, Nick. <laughs> yeah, well, he's just getting warmed up at that point. So the best way of describing this is... Do you remember that Belgian film, Calvin... Here we go. The answer is no, but carry on. OK. That so, Belgian... OK, so some years ago, <clears throat> there was a Belgian film called Calvaire, The yes. Ordeal. Yeah, oh, oh... Do you remember that? No. No. Uh... <laughs> never, never even heard of it. OK, I did review it here on the programme. But... I wasn't listening. I was listening, I've just forgotten. Yeah, OK, fine. So th this has some of the kind of hallucinogenic trippiness of that film. On the one hand, it is a, you know, it's... It, it's a horror movie. It's a gory horror movie. It's a movie which involves extreme cinema elements. It's uh, a movie which has, you know, pain and suffering, uh, as you could begin to hear from uh, from Nick there. With uh, uh. on the other hand, the whole thing is drenched in this weird sort of off kilter acid spiked 
dreamy, nightmarish hue that makes it seem like it's kind of existing in a slightly ethereal netherworld, right down to the fact that individual scenes don't even seem to run into each other in any sort of strictly linear fashion. You know when people talk about um, uh, David Lynch being able to conjure uh, worlds that have a nightmarish logic to them? If you think of something like Eraserhead, and I'm not comparing this to Eraserhead, I'm just using this as, a, as an example, that Eraserhead makes sense in a nightmarish way, but it doesn't make sense in an absolute way. Like, how did he... What are they... What, what, they're, they're, how... What? Sorry, what's that? So... The, the, so the first thing to say about Mandy is it has that same similar approach to to its logic. It might make some kind of psychological sense, but it makes very little absolute sense. The second thing to say is that despite the fact that, you know, if you're a, a, a gore hound or something, you know, you may be very tempted by the idea of a gory movie featuring Nick Cage and chainsaws. And it's... No. I'm no, I said if you are a gore movie fan, at which point you absent yourself from that okay. group because you're not a gore movie fan. No. You never have been. You didn't go and see Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Of course you know, not. Of course not. Fine. But if you are, yes. that is one of the things that you know that might appeal to you. But actually, what strikes a blow in terms of Mandy is not that. I mean, those elements are all there, and there is nastiness there, and there is pain there, and there is you know suffering there. But actually, that's not what makes it work. What makes it work is this strange, punch-drunk, dreamy, hallucinogenic sense. Now, having said that, it is entirely possible that that may well lose some audience members. Uh, I, at least one person with whom I'm very good friends and a, a very, very good critic, who I, I won't name because it's it's his place to, to, to tell people this, thought that it was just way too arty for its own good and that it was, you know, somebody basically using a, a horror narrative in order to go off into some kind of, you know, art esoterica and he did not like it at all. <laughs> I kind of went along with it. I mean, there were there are things in it that I thought it threatened to fall apart but within the sort of overriding madness of it and of course if you're going to make that kind of film who are you going to call Nick Cage because he is one of the very few people who have managed to hold all that together but I, frankly I thought Andrea Rosborough had in many ways the more difficult role because it is through her performance that you're sort of drawn into the emotional heart narrative so it's very deliberately and knowingly uh, culty, and but it is a film that manages to achieve a kind of nightmarish, trippy logic that sort of makes sense in and of itself. As I said, it's it it's like the the heavily drugged version of Calvair, as half remembered through a through a you know through a glass darkly it's a that very makes no sense that sentence to me okay uh it's a gore movie but it's a bit kaleidoscopic okay good, good thank good, you good 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 i got that straight away <laughs>